is going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special post-Labor Day episode of Brandon's Face, the podcast about a playlist. My name is Jonathan Beardsley, and as always, I'm joined by the one and only Brandon May. Brandon, how was your Labor Day weekend? Labor Day weekend. I worked on Labor Day, so the weekend was Oh, fun. I know. You, you never stop working, <laughs> but I hope you at least enjoyed your weekend a little bit. Um, I did. I didn't work a full day on Labor Day. Yes, despite California being on fire in almost every sense of the word, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Um, We were actually going to take this week off, full transparency, but there ended up being enough content to break down for all of you. So we wanted to give you an episode. And I think before we do that, we should just hit on, please like, follow, subscribe if you have not already. Please follow along with the playlist. You can find the link in the show notes. And that will be updated every week so you can see what we'll be covering on every new episode. And if you want to go back through our archive, we have all of that as well. You can check out our website, brandonsface.com. Find us on Instagram, Reddit, all major podcasting platforms. With that out of the way, you ready to talk about some music, buddy? I am so ready. All right. Well, first up this week, we usually start off with EDM. But when there's a new Freddie Gibbs song, we start off with a new Freddie Gibbs song. It had to be Freddie. Uh, Yes, he released his new song, Too Much, featuring Moneybag Yo. I love this track and will probably be listening to it every day for the rest of the year. But more (laughs) importantly, we finally got a release date for his new album. Soul Sold Separately, with all of the S's as dollar signs, of course, is scheduled to be released on September 30th. And obviously, I cannot wait to hear that one in full. What are your thoughts on this one, man? Jesus Christ, man. This man just kills it every time he hits the mic. This is fantastic. Uh, Shout out to Moneybag for making me listen to the No Ceilings mixtape again. I'm really glad that somebody incorporated that into a, <laughs> into, into a rhyme. If y'all have not heard, uh, No Ceilings is a fantastic Lil Wayne mixtape. It's incredible. Yeah. Lil Wayne is the mixtape god. That, that mixtape run he went on during the first three Carters is unlike anything anybody else has ever done in mixtape history. It, it just blows my mind, man. He took that uh, he took that ice cream beat and just murdered it, man. Like, yep. Yeah. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne, shout out Lil Wayne. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, man, let's move on to this new one from Duckworth and Clay called Beg. I thought we were going to get the Chrome Bowl album, but we got a new song instead. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, I mean, my thoughts are what happened to the album. I was like super stoked for it. I thumbs up. This is a fun track. I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of like itching now, you know? Yeah, same. Um, I through everything I can see online. It was supposed to be August 26th. I, I haven't seen any other date um, on stuff. He's reposted. It has said that. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. Hopefully we get it soon, but this is a good pop rap track. Kind of, I could picture Amine doing this track. It's a fun one. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got a new one from the Gorillas called New Gold featuring Tame Impala and Booty Brown. I was curious to know if this was your type of music or not. So it's kind of weird, but I think I, I think I love it. Uh, Tame and Gorillas was not something that I thought I was going to dig, but like it works really well in my opinion. The song mm-hmm. is catchy. I wish I heard a little bit more gorillas, but uh, this track worked. It worked for me, man. I love both the gorillas and Tame Impala. Uh, Kevin Parker has made some really special music in his day, and uh, so has the gorillas. So it was good. W- was this up your alley? Uh, kinda. I think I think we're on the same page. I think that it would have benefited from a little less Booty Brown, maybe not a second verse from him, and maybe more gorillas. Uh, But I enjoyed the song. Their new album does not come out until next year, but I'm already hoping that there's a Freddie Gibbs collab somewhere (laughs) on it. Please, God. After that performance, how can they not? Right, exactly. Dear God, please. Uh, Yeah, so we'll be looking forward to that one. I like the Gorillas. I don't know about you, but I like them. I like the Gorillas, man. I've been, uh, I kind of, a few years ago, I kind of went down and, listened to all of their albums kind of like in order and so they've got their self-titled and then demon days and both of those are fucking Mm -hmm. masterpieces and then plastic beach is really good and you know well that was the year they played coachella it was i didn't see them because i wasn't like a giant fan of theirs i mean i knew feel good inc and shit like that but yeah um 
Uh, every, I saw them, and that was all I knew at the time. <laughs> yeah, every, like, everybody. Ennis Wood and that. Yeah, <laughs> everybody that went. I think even you, including, were like, you didn't go. You didn't see gorillas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, they weren't high on my list. I was very tired. They were last act Sunday night. It was my first Coachella, so I was pretty worn out, but they put on a good show. And their artist, the one that does all of their artwork, is putting out an art book pretty soon. So that should be pretty cool to check out. Neat. Yeah, I like their artwork. It's really cool. Me too. All right, man. Let's talk about this new Kelly Uchis track, No Hey Lay. I'm always happy to hear new Kali Uchis. I like this song. It's a little more on the dancey pop side than the R&B side of her music. So it leaves me wanting a little bit there, but it's a solid song. What do you think of it? You know, I've been practicing my Spanish. And so it was kind of fun to read the lyrics and uh, the house beat backing the simple and sweet lyrics is just kind of awesome, man. I really like this one. Yeah, I'm hoping for more solo new music from her. She's been on a crazy feature run since her last album. All of them have been great, but it feels like we're finally getting back to her music, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if her next album is English, Spanish, or both, but I'm glad we got another Spanish track. It'll probably be both, and I'm here for that. Let's go. Yeah, I I don't think she should feel the need to commit either way. You know, I feel like she blends both pretty well, but we will see. Uh. New one from Ari Lennox and Summer Walker called Queen Space off of her upcoming album Age Sex Location, which drops this week. Very excited for that. I can already tell this album is going to be the sultry masterpiece that Ari has been crafting her whole career. I'm really excited to break that one down with you. I feel like it might be just in between both of our tastes because she's equal parts r&b and neo soul which i think you'll gravitate towards but what did you think of this yeah i think this is going to be one of those albums that um we both have wildly different standouts of and i love those types of albums um Me too. i can't get into summer walker i think we talked about this when we reviewed summer walker's album mm-hmm. was it last year um yeah besides that i think that ari sounds great i think she's she's, she's just been killing it lately man <laughs> Yeah, Summer Walker is, she, <laughs> I think you have to be a certain kind of R&B fan to really appreciate her, but I don't I don't think she's very great. She's not bad on this track. It's just not a memorable performance from her on this one. Yep. Uh, I feel like LMA might have done maybe a little bit better on this, not to like pit them against each other, be comparative. I just, I don't know. I feel like I get what this is, like. Honestly, when you look at the pool of like current R&B artists that you really don't want to lump into like pop or hip hop, it's not that many people. So this really is two of the top 10 in female R&B on the same song. So that should be appreciated for what it is, even if it's not like my favorite too, I guess. No, I totally dig it. And that's a really good synopsis of that. For sure, man. Well, we will be talking about that one next week. Uh, Up next, we got a Spotify single from Chloe. This is Freak Like Me. I forget who does the original of the song. Another cover that I like, man. Uh, I think this one's good. I wish it had a little more low end, though. What do you think about it? (laughs) Uh, I agree, actually. Uh, But I think she's got such a unique voice. She sounds great. It's basically just flexing on all the r&b artists right now with her range man she's got a really really crazy range Uh, she has one of the best ranges in r&b and she's just getting started as a solo artist hopefully we get more also spotify singles really been killing it the last like year and a half we got that nas track got that division track a little bit ago got snow allegra's do for love cover oh wow that was a a lot of good shit the snow allegra one i totally forgot was a spotify single but you're right yeah, man, I feel like they've been on a run lately. Yeah. Uh, next up in the R&B world is a new one from Yuna. This one's called Fool For You. I don't think we've talked about Yuna yet. Um, she is a really good R&B singer with a few absolute jams. I would direct any of our interested listeners to check out her song Crush featuring Usher from, I think, 2016. Uh, I haven't really been keeping up with her as much lately. I remember she put out an album 2019. I think there was a Tyler feature on there that I liked. But it looks like she's been busy because this is off of her fourth EP that she's put out this year. I have not listened to all of those yet, but I enjoyed this song. So I figured I'd throw it on. What did you think of it? 
it's got this really kind of like laid back production with that super subtle guitar and bass and man i really like this two thumbs good man i'm glad uh if she ends up lumping all of these into an album i'll throw it on uh you know with multiple eps it's kind of like young the giant just did that with their both act one and act two and i didn't throw the whole album on there because we had just talked about one and two so exactly yeah exactly (laughs) i'm just catching wind of this and didn't want to flood the playlist with everything yuna but i'm glad you like this and we'll definitely revisit her music uh next up these ones are interesting so we got two tracks from romeo santos one called i'm not even going to try and pronounce the track names one's featuring rosalia one's called one's featuring justin timberlake the justin timberlake one is not great but the rosalia one is fucking incredible i love her voice on it i think she's great but i was honestly surprised at how much i loved his voice on it too and i think he's only ranked like in the 300s in terms of like uh spotify in the world in terms of listeners but like this fucker has like full-length stadium concerts in other countries on like hbo max and shit so like he's a pretty big global name i've just never heard of him until now had you as of right now he's number 243 in the world on spotify and i have never heard of him uh the new album probably made him climb yeah i'm assuming up on willow was just a, a beautiful track man i really liked this one um and I liked the Justin Timberlake one, but Justin Timberlake's been off recently. Um, he just did a feature on another on another song that we covered, yeah. and I think it was mm-hmm. I forget the Calvin which one Harris was. one. The Calvin Harris one. How could I forget? Which should have been a slam dunk for him, honestly. It should have been like, a slam dunk for both of them, but then again, so so should have that album been, and it was not. So I I never wish for somebody to get their heart broken, but like if he could just get dumped and then go to like. <laughs> Timbaland's <laughs> studio for like a year and just oh, work and also i know so it was around the time he was working on all those fucking trolls soundtracks uh he put out like that song with the i think he put out one with pharrell or something he put out one with anderson pack for one of those movies there's video footage of him in the studio with lizzo a song featuring both of them has never come out i feel like that's a shame hmm. either that or it's so bad that her label didn't let it come out but (laughs) i feel like i feel like we need that man that would be a really good good collaboration to hear and maybe she's the one to bring him back into some some good pop fucking maybe man maybe she needs to play some flute and make him a little sad so he can write some music that is actually listening to as much as i want that to be good i really don't think it would be i I think (laughs) I like if it's him and Timbaland, I'm on board. But if it's not, then it's it's a mixed bag. You know, I fell across a thread a couple of years ago on some forum. I forget. It might have been Reddit. It could have been something else. And somebody was somebody was talking like somebody was talking like if you only like one song or you only or you only like a specific like album from an artist look at who produced that album it turns out i'm mm-hmm. not a big fan of justin timberlake i'm a huge fan of timberland though <laughs> 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 which is this entire conversation because that's valid right like yeah i think i think that really I think that really transcends all art to some degree too. Like you can think an actor's great and you're like, man, why does this movie suck? And you're like, Oh, I like this director. Like it's not that I like this actor. So yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a really good, good train of thought. And it's very true (laughs) for real, for real. Okay, man, let's talk about this. Dylan Francis (laughs) remixing goodies. (laughs) Wasn't expecting this. I'm here for it though. I'll take it. (laughs) Did we need this? Definitely not. Was Dylan Francis the one to do it? Absolutely. Yes. Oh yeah. Is it bad? Also? Yes. It's it's one of those things where it's like, nobody needed this, but thank you. Question mark. All of it can be true. Yep. (laughs) And yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> this will do very well in his Vegas set. Honestly, man, good for him, dude. Like, yeah, good for him. Good um, for, I, I love Dylan. For real, I'm sure that sample was not easy to clear because it's not a remix. It's his own song. So he had to have cleared the sample. So yeah, no, that's true. That's very true. Uh, props to him for doing it, man. I hope we get some actual like new dylan francis music in bulk sometime soon i miss album mode dylan francis 
I mean, the last real album I really liked from him. Uh, Money sucks. Money sucks. That I mean that that's the one. I mean I didn't I wasn't like a huge fan of Happy Machine and we'll see. Yeah. I mean I'm 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 a really old Dylan Francis like Masta Blasta kind of Dylan Francis. Yeah, you fan. like Moombaton Dylan Francis. And it's funny because I don't like any other Moombaton. So like music, like it's just, it's just that. And uh, I've seen him a number of times. He's fucking hilarious. Um, I am sad. I missed the DJ Hansel do surprise do lab set at Coachella this year. That was, that was the one thing I was really sad about not going this past year. You're just going to have to go one deeper, <laughs> man. He's, he's, he's a great performer. He is. Shout out Dylan Francis. Uh, All right, man. Very interested in getting your thoughts on this new Glitch Mob song called The Flavor. So please. This does not sound like the Glitch Mob. I like double checked. That's my notes too. I double checked, bro. I was like, is this really the Glitch Mob or is this some like real, is this some Spotify fuck up or something? No, man, this is the Glitch Mob. I mean. They posted about it. I'm interested to see where this sound takes them, I guess, but this is nothing like see without eyes or love death immortality or um, even their first album, which I mean, all, all three are fucking amazing. I've I've seen, I saw them on the love death immortality tour. I saw them on the love without eyes tour. And I've even seen Craddy who left after their first album uh, solo. And I, uh, this, this, this ain't it chief. I do not like this for the glitch mob. I think it's a decent track, but like they've got to, they've got to either be trolling us or they have completely sold out. So, yeah, we're not in drink the sea anymore. That's for That's sure. It. Drink the sea. I was trying to figure it out. I'm yeah. trying to find the album yeah. title. We've come a long way from there. Like if you showed this to somebody that had been in a coma after drink the sea came out, they'd be like, <laughs> the fuck? Uh, but yeah, still interested to see what, what else we're going to get from this. Cause this clearly is not the end. One of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite movies happens in the movie SLC Punk. And he's telling his kid who has a mohawk that he's got to get like a real job. And he goes, remember, son, I didn't sell out. I bought in. This is not that. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah, always ask yourself that before making a decision in life, really, too. (laughs) Are you selling out or are you buying in? Because I think it matters, right? Oh, it very much does. It very much does. (laughs) Oh, that's going to be our first Brandon Space shirt. Sell out or buy it. <laughs> um, all right. Let's talk about these new Royksop songs. I know uh, you're excited they, too. I actually am. Uh, so we got Speed King and The Night. And they are definitely throwing us straight into the fucking deep end for the Profound Mysteries 3 rollout. Because <laughs> we're two songs in at almost 18 minutes, which is crazy. But I do like both of these tracks. And I have a feeling that the Gran Turismo soundtrack team is frothing at the mouth <laughs> to get Speed King into the new game somehow. <laughs> yes. Yes. If Gran Turismo, <laughs> what is it, 8 now needs a new soundtrack, De- uh, Rorksop definitely needs to be a part of that. Uh, Speed King is just a fucking progressive journey, bro. It's nine it is, minutes yeah. and 53 seconds, and you know that is my jam. Um I, I think the same of the night. However, those kind of old glitchy arcade synth sounds were something I really didn't like. And I'm really glad that they didn't show up much throughout the entire track. But like that first couple of minutes, I was like, uh, like, like kind of just powering yeah. through, you know, like, oh, are you mm-hmm. sure you guys really did this? Like, <laughs> you guys don't want to yeah. edit this one more time. <laughs> like, <laughs> It will always be a profound mystery, but uh, we are getting, what is it? Volume three is due out November 18th. So we'll be checking it out, man. Three albums in one year is fucking impressive, no matter how I feel about them. Correct. All right, man. We got one you threw on here called Remember Me featuring Stevie Appleton by Sonny Fodera and Gorgon City. What are your thoughts on this? All right. So, uh, I'm a, I'm actually a big fan of Sonny Fodera. Um, I forget what record label released his album called Frequently Flying. Was it Dirty Bird? No, it wasn't Dirty Bird. I'm trying to figure it out here. Um, I'll find it. It is Defected Records. Uh, Defected released his album Frequently Flying back in 2017, I believe. And I just became a big fan of his. And uh, obviously I like Gorgon City. 
this track is clearly a club track. Like it's meant to be mixed. Everything about this track is meant to be like mixed in as sort of like a transition track. Um, and yeah. I'm sure as a DJ, you you recognize those parts that were like about 15 seconds too long to actually be like a song. Uh, yep. But um, that being said, it's a great club track. And I'm sure a ton of people out there are looking for this ID from Ibiza or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because yeah, right away the production quality is very good. And it's my note, my first note says it's not a track I'd be mad to hear live. Um, that, yeah, as it. a single, I don't really know if it does much for me, but this is going to be a great club track, like you said. Nice. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, yeah, man, I did. Uh, next up, we got a new one from Tennis called Repeater. It's a tennis song, so it's obviously a jam, but... <laughs> I want to say that while I was playing the song and taking notes, my wife came in the room and hit me with the grandma's boy classic line, you would if you had robot ears. <laughs> and I feel like that that honestly sums up my review of this. It's, it's a great it's a great song if you got robot ears like Brandon and I. We I, love this type of music. Tennis always kills it. Uh, tennis, D DJ Tennis just always just fucking kills it. So uh, I love shit like this, and this, ba this bass line just won't quit. Um, there's not much to say else about this track. I mean, it's it's a techno DJ Tennis track. Do me a favor. Click on the artist real quick on Spotify. Okay. It'll take you to the indie rock band Tennis, not oh, DJ Tennis. <laughs> Spotify oh, fucked up somehow. I've double checked. It is DJ Tennis. It's DJ Tennis Repeater on the label, on Beatport, et cetera, et cetera. But oh, Spotify no, yeah, fucked it says up it on somehow. The, yeah, it says it on the cover art. Right. It'll, yeah. it'll fix it in time. But I, yeah, I, that's thought, it, I thought it was funny because I follow both of them. So jokes on Spotify because I like both of their music. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting one by Brandon. No, nope, <laughs> sure <talk>. not. <laughs> All right, man. Let's move into the rock realm of things because we have some interesting releases to break down. First off, we got this one from the Beverly Kills, Fantasia. I don't think we've covered Swedish post-punk yet, but I like <laughs> it. What are your thoughts on it, man? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm a big fan of international post-punk um, as well as domestic po uh, post-punk. Uh, the repeating melody is kind of grating at first, and it actually took me to my second or third listen to like kind of like be like, oh, wait, that kind of makes sense. Um, it took a little bit of work. I like the rest of their music a little better, um, but they haven't released one this year, so... Um, uh, yet. So I, I had just, I, I kind of threw this on as soon as I realized they released it and I like it. Uh, I like a lot of their music better than I like this song, but I'm excited to see if this is maybe an EP or an album rollout from them. They're a small little band. So I'm excited to, excited to cover some of their music. Fuck yeah, man. Well, definitely throw on an EP if they end up releasing one. I like this. You know, I will. All right. Next up, we got a new one from Boston Manor called Inertia. This is the single edit. This is a band I found while putting together that playlist the other week, and I really liked a few of the singles they've put out recently, so I figured I'd throw their most recent one on. I like the sound of it. It's somewhere in between like Yumi at Six and Trapped, and not a lot of <laughs> bands exist in that space. Uh, I'm interested to hear how the album edit of this one plays out. It's not my Trapped. favorite single of theirs. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this band before. Have you? Uh, I have not. Uh, Boston Manor, any relation to Joyce? Um, uh, one could only hope, but uh, they, they will end up covering the album when it comes out. But they released a single called Fox Gloves that is on that playlist I sent you. It's it's really fucking good. For anybody that doesn't know, uh, John of the Brandon's Face playlist released a uh, or the Brandon's Face podcast released a playlist called The Scene Didn't Die. You just grew out of it. And if you take that personally, please go feel free to like that playlist. Um <laughs> This is very good, man. I love the timing, the main riff, the vocal tones. It's all it's all very good. Um, I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm glad that you found them, man, because I like it. Good, man. Oh, well, we will break down that album when it comes out later on this year. But now we get to talk about Pierce the Veil, my friend, because I've been waiting to talk to you about Pierce the Veil for some time. <laughs> they finally released their new song, Past the Nirvana, their first new song since 2016. Where do you fall on the fan spectrum of Pierce the Veil? 
Uh, I was a big fan of King for a Day and that album for a moment in like mm-hmm. 2013, I think is when that was released, 2012 or something like that. Yeah, 2012. And uh, that's about it. King I of never... the Day is maybe the last seminal song from the original scene. The last great song. I mean, one could say it marked the death of the scene, if you ask me. Yeah. Uh, I, it's I, that or can you feel my heart for sure? But anyways, keep going. We'll we'll talk about we'll talk about we'll that get that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so this is actually really great. Um, I unfortunately stumbled upon before I wrote my uh, my review of this song on people's reactions to this song because it was a big deal in the post hardcore community. It's a very big deal, man. This it song was a is big a very deal, big man. Deal. First song yeah. in six years. Um, so before I tell you what everybody else's re- reactions were, I didn't I didn't really like the kind of rappy bridge. The chorus and the verses are all very good. Um, I hope we have an album in coming. I really liked this one. And it's kind of telling listening to this song and the next song on our playlist, which is by quicksand, a very old school Mm -hmm. nineties post hardcore band that they went back to the roots of the genre to make something that was really fucking neat. And it's unlike a lot of their other music. Cause when I think of King for a day, I think of high pitched vocals, some fucking squeeze, like some screams. And it, it, it isn't quite that, even though we kind of get both of those, it's just in a more digestible way, I think. And I think they wrote a very good, pure post-hardcore track. The post-hardcore community as a whole didn't really like it that much. They were like, this is weird. And it's like, it's not weird if you know, <laughs> like, the 90s version of post-hardcore that isn't the used and Pierce the Veil and Silverstein. You, you, you know, like, yeah, sure. um, I really liked this track. And I've actually listened to it. I, I've, I think I listened to it three times today. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I have. It's probably one of my most played songs this week by far, if not just for pure curiosity. But I actually do enjoy this track. I don't really know what expectations I had for it, but I think it met whatever they were. And you were touching on like the the post hardcore and this and that. I think that when they started, it was very easy to kind of pick what genre or combination of genres they are or were but they've kind of just grown into pierce the veil. Like it isn't just just one thing. Like they combine, yeah, they combine emo, they combine pop. I guess there is a tiny bit of hip hop influence in this song. And they use a lot of like 2000s metal riffs and like hammer-ons. And his voice is always gonna be the thing that just shuts it down. He has a range that is unlike almost anyone else, man. So have I ever told you about the time I discovered pierce the veil? Tell me all about it. You have not. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So this was I was like deep into the scene at this point. Like it was fully popping off in my area at that point. I was going to shows three, four times a week. I I was living on my own at this point and three of my friends and I decided to go to Vegas for a weekend and we were broke as fuck, had just enough to get a case of beer and a room at the Motel 6. So. We drive there, don't realize how long it is, fucking get there exhausted, smoke way too many cigarettes, go to sleep, wake up the next day, realize we have like money for Subway for lunch and like (laughs) nothing else. And we're like, shit, we can't do anything. Like, why the fuck did we come out here? We are from Northern California. You and I haven't talked about the scene up there too much, but Dance Gavin Dance and a Skylet Driver both from there. Two of the guys I was with were in a band called Teared on December at the time. So actually maybe all three guys I was with, but um, so we're in Vegas hanging out. We're looking online. We're like, dance, Kevin dance and a Skylet driver playing in Vegas tonight. So we message the guitarist of a Skylet drive and he's like, Oh yeah, we'll throw you on the list. And we're like sick. So we ended up going to the show that night. Uh, I think dance, Kevin dance ended up not playing because of a Johnny Craig reason, which was extremely (laughs) common back then. And a Skylet Drive ended up like they were one of the like openers. So they play. And then this band called Pierce the Veils coming on. Never heard of them before. Seen their their like album advertisements and AP and that's about it. And like, I think they opened with either Currents Conclusive or Yaboy and Dollface. And I was like, oh, my fucking God, like, (laughs) what the fuck am I witnessing, dude? And from that moment, I became just an instant fan. Like right when I got back home, uh, quickly through like 
downloaded their album on iTunes and have been to maybe I don't know if you if you include Warp Tours, I've probably seen them eight to ten times, and they're great every fucking time, man. Uh, you know, going back and listening to a Flair for the Dramatic is is it's a pretty good record. That's a great story, man. Uh, yeah, it, it's weird. That night actually did not end there. I ended up at an Emerosa and Skites airplane concert that night too. Welcome to Las one, Vegas. But yeah, yes, exactly. Anyways, uh, yeah, crazy, <laughs> crazy concert. Uh, like to touch on what you were saying before, I do think an album announcement is around the corner. Let's uh, let's go, man. I'm I'm excited for that, and I hope it's more of this Pierce the Veil and not the old Pierce the Veil because they kind of blend very well together and I can see this as a natural progression for them. And regardless of what anybody really thinks, this kind of is a really good uh, representation of post hardcore. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. People were most worried about the drumming aspect. I don't know if you're aware of all the controversy they don't have a drummer. around that. They do have a, they have a new drummer. I don't know uh, who it is, but the drummer was the singer's brother who has since gotten a cute I, I don't want to say specific accusations but during the me too thing some stuff came out about him he has since left the band in the pandemic they ended up doing like a zoom performance of a thing which he was a part of and that got some kind of mixed reactions this is their first official thing without him uh and i don't think it i couldn't tell at all the drumming still sounded excellent yeah the the drumming was excellent and quite honestly the times when bands that i know of have used specific studio drummers uh ended up being some of my favorite albums and they still Good perform point. they still perform those live on stage fun fact for anybody who's listening uh jack's mannequins everything in transit was recorded in studio in one day the entire album one day drummer tommy lee not a joke yeah <laughs> dude yeah that that broke my fucking brain. how did they not include that in the pam and tommy show you know right Where, like where's him riding the jacks man because it was a day homeboy probably I'm showed just, up with like a bottle of jack and was like let's fucking do this that like, needed to be the that would have been the episode that made me actually like the show <laughs> <laughs> all right man oh, let's shit. move on to this quicksand song they released a new one called giving the past away guitars sound great vocals are good it's a great song we've talked about them once before right yeah uh i think we were i think we reviewed their album last year before we were That's on the spotify called distant populations and quicksand is one of the uh pioneers of the post hardcore sound that you just heard on Pierce the Veil they released an album in 1993 called Slip they released an album in 1995 called Manic Compression and i i i by notes literally say i don't think i dislike a uh, quicksand track and this is no exception they really have a way of making music that i just fucking dig and i really hope that this means more new music is on the way fuck yeah man well we will definitely break it down if they are releasing anything new. I'll keep an eye on their social oh, you media. You know we fucking will. I follow them on our Insta. I'll keep an eye and see if they're releasing an album anytime nice. soon. Uh, next up, we got one you threw on here from an artist called Soin. This one's called Trials. Talk to me about this. So uh, this band usually makes uh, a little bit of heavier music. As you can tell, it progresses a bit towards the end mm -hmm. to like a little heavier. Uh, but this is an album rollout. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about. If you get curious, go listen to any of their other albums and it's good shit. Uh, this song is fucking beautiful and everything works together really well. I've got major Pink Floyd vibes from that solo, that guitar solo yeah. and like the preemptive riffs to the solo are very Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. The strings are just exquisite. I love everything about this. This is progressive rock on on just a level that I really, really appreciate. What did you think about this? Because was this your first experience with the sewing track? It was. Uh, I feel like I've heard a band like this before. Maybe if this isn't indicative of their sound all the time, then it, it wouldn't be indicative of that. Like I've this was my first time hearing this specific artist, but I really liked this. I you know I love the guitars on this song. I fucking incredible, did. man. But the uh, the vocals were good too. It's a good song. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you have heard uh, a little band called Porcupine Tree, which makes very similar music. So, yes, yes, well put. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we got a new one from the Wonder Years. This one's called Old Friends Like Lost Teeth. This is like the fifth single for this album rollout, but we haven't covered any of it. So I threw it on here. 
I've always liked their music, but just missed this rollout up until now. I went back and listened to all of the singles and I really like what I'm hearing. We'll definitely be reviewing that in a few weeks. What did you think of this one? Uh, this song is fucking beautiful, man. Uh, the lyrics are great. The breakdown portion right before the final bridge is great. And then that snare that turns right into fucking chaos of the final chorus is fucking awesome, man. I really like this. Really excited for the album. This is the first single I've heard from the album. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a good one. I think that one I do have a release date for that one. That one September 23rd. So two weeks. Nice. Yeah. (laughs) All right, man. This one we got a new one from wheel called blood drinker. You know, I'm not a huge fan of their specific sound, but I do like this track. I think it's decent. I'm sure this one's making some waves on Reddit. Um, What are your thoughts on it? How's the Internet receiving this one? Holy time signatures, Batman. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is this is like if Mashuga had clean vocals, and I'm super into it. Uh, the drumming is phenomenal, especially when you realize like how much insane timing ability it takes to do something like this. Like, can you imagine what his metronome sounds like in his ear while he's tracking these drums? Oh God, no! Like God, d- no! Ding, 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 ding. Like, <laughs> sounds like a pot falling downstairs. <laughs> man this is fucking great man i'm super into this uh their album resident human from last year made my top 10 albums of the entire year um and i really hope that this is a new album rollout because i still listen to that album on the regular dude fuck yeah man uh i liked it like i said uh did we get an album announcement i don't know i'm not on the socials i didn't hear anything so we'll see all right we'll keep an eye on it Next up, we have a new one from Currents. This one's called The Death We Seek. I thought this one was really good. They have a nice balance between the heavier parts of the sound of their sound and the more melodic parts of their sound. They remind me a lot of August Burns Red in that regard. I really liked this. What are your thoughts on it? So uh, do you know anything about Currents? Have you ever followed them? Have you ever heard another I've track heard them, them before. I don't know like the band much about them, but I've heard their music before. Yeah. So Currents became popular just as I stopped following Metalcore. Um, I haven't really dived into their discography, but apparently they've made some seminal to the genre records. So I'm going to definitely dive in. As for this track, I'm a big fucking fan. Uh, they're heavy as fuck, and I love the chorus. Couldn't agree more. You want to talk about some more heavy music? <laughs> yes, please. Because we got a new fucking dying fetus song, dude. Compulsion oh my god, cruelty. yes, we did. Dear God, they're <laughs> they're out here proving that they're legends for a reason, man. This is insane. <laughs> this is so good. The they grooves, John. The grooves. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. I was <laughs> They you know, are one of the bands people try to emulate and you realize nothing's like the real thing, you know? Isn't it crazy that they're a three piece and they have been for since like the nineties? Like oh yeah. It just it blows me away that this is a three <laughs> this is a three person band. Uh I was wondering when we were gonna get a new dying fetus single. Uh the uh I think they're actually currently on tour. Insane band, uh, and they continuously prove themselves to be pioneers of death metal as a genre. Uh the last record we got from them was dropped in twenty seventeen and was called Wrong One to Fuck With and was very good. Uh so hopefully the arrival of a new single marks the album rollout. Uh, if so, I'm going to love it and I'm sh- and I'm going to make you listen to it. So um, of course you are. God, man, if anybody is not aware of Dying Fetus and it's either the first time you've heard this song or you're going to go listen to it right now and you're a fan of death metal, go listen to Grotesque Impalement from 1993, like fucking immediately. They have such pull in the death metal community and the genre as a whole they are pioneers and they're not respected enough for it i don't think um they basically created deathcore by in by basically just including a breakdown in, in in a few of their songs in the early 90s and that entire genre was spawned out of this band so i'm i'm a big i'm a big fan of this band and this song and this album art (laughs) like it's just it's just my jam dude this is all things brandon man i I had a feeling you were gonna love this i i'm happy for you and i enjoy this quite as quite a bit as well i'm looking forward to whatever they do next man this is great me too 
All right. And the last up for the singles, we got a new one from Suicide Silence called You Must Die. <laughs> uh, very straightforward name. What do you, you think of this song? I am, Vince, I am Vince McMahon on this fine day, man. We got new Dying Fetus and Suicide Silence to review in the same week. <laughs> My yep. God, man. Uh, this track is awesome. Number one, uh, you can tell that Eddie is really trying to emulate Mitch Lucker. Rest in peace. And to be completely honest, it's kind of working. Uh, the music video for this track is fun. I'll throw it in the show notes. They're all in old guy makeup. It's pretty silly. Uh, the album art for this single is the album. Um is the album artwork and it's very interesting <laughs> it's this astronaut that's also a skeleton it's fun fun stuff uh i'm very excited to hear what's next uh i'm a big suicide silence fan except for the one album and uh we'll 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 uh we'll see what happens yeah man i thought this was a, another banger still no release date that i've seen for their new album but it feels like we're inching closer to it yes sir all right we got one EP to cover this week. It is Teresa by The Front Bottoms. I like this EP as much as I liked all of the singles. I think it's a good collection of songs that I'll be coming back to for a while. But I think I read online that this is a re-recording of one of their older EPs. Did, did you hear anything about that? I did. I did read online that this is a re-recording of old songs that were never actually, quote, released. Ah, um, uh, okay. There are probably CDs of these tracks somewhere, and I would love to hear the original. So if anybody listening has those, hit me up. Uh, more Than It Hurts should be just required emo listening, bro. As with Hello World. They're both just fantastic mm -hmm. tracks. I love this band, and I can't help but like basically everything that they've done. They hit the nail on the head every single time, and they also put on a really fun show if you haven't seen them. If you get the chance, go see them. Uh, this is also just part one of the what they're calling grandmother recordings, so get ready for some more. Fuck yeah. I wonder what grandmother name we're going to get next. I don't know. One of the bandmates, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, most likely. All right, man. We only got a few albums to break down. First of which is this new one from Megadeth, The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. I'm very interested on your thoughts on this album as a whole with you being the, the bigger metal fan between us. You ready? So please go first. Yeah, yeah, dive in. First off, I really love the Monty Python sample we get in the opening track. It's just so great. <laughs> Bring out your dead. All right, this is, this is Megadeth, and it is definitely a solid entry into their discography. Will Megadeth ever put out an album as meaningful in the realm of music as a whole as Rust in Peace or Countdown to Extinction or Peace Sells But Who's Buying Again? Probably not. And it's really an impossible standard to hold, not only to this band, but any other band too. Uh, is this thrash metal? Yes and no. Is it fucking awesome? Hell yeah, it is. Uh, this album rocks and it has a plethora of sick ass guitar solos, melodic guitar harmonies, wild lyrics and thoughtful yet simple riffs. Uh, there are moments when I don't even realize that Dave is in his 60s. Uh, his voice very obviously is showing a little bit of wear. However, I actually think that it adds a little bit to the album. It's more of an instrument and it's not quite like at the gates his last album where it kind of took away from the music instead it kind of feels natural and you got to give it to him where he didn't try to hide it at all which he probably could have using some software which he didn't um some high points on this album are uh that double bass chug groove on dogs of chernobyl uh the uh the entirety of the song life and hell uh psychopathy into Killing Time. That's a great one. Uh, Celebutant is a fantastic song. Uh, from that opening riff to that like that melodic break, um, things that I don't think are amazing. Often, uh, like things that I don't think aren't amazing. Uh, the way Dave's voice kind of like grates on the song Sacrifice really had me thinking that his voice is shot, but he kind of pulls it together for the majority of the album. Uh, this voice isn't new to the album uh literally all of the spoken word stuff i didn't like it kind of didn't need to be there um overall i really enjoyed this this album more than i didn't and the things i don't like about it are basically things all 
bands go through when they've been around for 40 fucking years and have released 26 albums. Um, I give it a seven and uh, my standout is Dogs of Chernobyl. What did you think about this Megadeth album? So I agree with you that the music is fucking awesome. I disagree with you that the vocals don't affect it as much as the At The Gates album. For my personal experience, they definitely took away a little bit. And like a song like Killing Time, like you said, I think that music is awesome. But his vocals on that song just like, man, <laughs> they test me at times. Uh, but like you said, they're 40 years in. So you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt. They're never going to release an album as great as their greatest hits. But I think, for, like you said, for where they're at, it's really not bad. My my like initial negative reception to this album aside, it seems to be doing pretty well in terms of streaming. And I think it's going to be a good entry into their discography, like you said. But this is not going to be an album I'll be coming back to. I got it in like the five <laughs> to six range. Uh, yeah, Dogs of Chernobyl or We'll Be Back are probably my standouts. Dogs of Chernobyl is such a good song. It should have been a single, yeah. if you ask me. I agree. I would have picked that one over Soldier On or probably Night Stalkers, honestly. Super fair. All right, man, let's move on to this new Kenny Beats album called Louie. I was not sure if this was going to be an album of beats or collaborations, but I'm kind of happy it turned out to be an album of beats and a very cohesive one at that. There's still contributions from artists on the album, but they're never the focal point. This is an album full of him just chopping up retro pop and soul into his own sound. And I know it's blasphemous to say, and some people will be mad, but this album gives you the same vibe that like a Donuts by Jay Dilla does, you know? Yeah. And I'm not saying it's as iconic, but it's of the same thought process in my head. Um, I can't really differentiate a lot of this album from itself, so I don't really have like a lot of moments or songs to talk about. I gave the album a seven still as my standout because I can hear Omar Apollo's harmonies in there and he's <laughs> credited as, as a producer on that one. There you go. But the whole album's really good. And I think if you like like the first three songs, you're gonna like the rest of the ride just fine. What are your thoughts on it? Uh all right. So there are love letters. And then there are love letters that are written on like nice stationery and fountain pen with nice ink while Bill Evans trio is playing in the back. This album is very clearly the latter. Uh, Kenny Beats has made a really enjoyable record that is very clearly both a love letter to music in general, but also kind of a victory lap for him in the last few years that he's had. Uh, he's been involved in so many fucking grade A projects that he kind of deserves it. Uh, he's using samples expertly. And in a lot of instances, they don't really feel like samples, which I think is really good. Uh, yeah. This is a good listen. It's mixed well, and it was clearly very fun to make for him and it almost feels like he made it for him i also gave it a seven my standout was get around fuck yeah man we're on the same page yes sir all right let's close out this episode by talking about this new oceans eight alaska album called disparity neither you or i really knew it was dropping this week so this was kind of a surprise release to us at least <laughs> and i was happy to have at least one more album to break down but i'm curious what your thoughts on this metalcore album are this is this was a surprise release and if you look at both uh both the band's social and the label's social fearless records uh and nobody really promoted it it's really weird the marketing is really weird for this album um huh. All right, so my review of this is, okay, that intro to Paradigm is fucking insane. It actually works really well coming from Hot Hand on Kenny Beats. Like, it actually <laughs> like, works really well. Brandon's um, face effect. <laughs> Uh, the track is great, uh, but that has to be one of the, and it has to be one of the best medical core metal core intros I've ever heard. Uh, this record is kind of exactly what I expected it to be. Great metal core with solid production value. Um, it's definitely one of the better metal core releases in my opinion this year. Um, I think we reviewed the last one last week. Was that becoming the archetype week? Um, yeah, it, I think the genre of metalcore has gone a little stale. I think we've got a lot of artists doing like the exact same thing as Bullet for My Valentine was doing with The Poison and As I Lay Dying was doing with 
um, you know, uh, shadows of security and oceans or whatever. And I, I think that it's just gotten a little stale. And I think that oceans eight Alaska kind of shook that shit up a little bit, which I love that. Uh, they incorporated a lot of, uh, a ton of like, uh, the genre gent, uh, palm muting, which I'm sure you mm-hmm. caught, uh, yep. and some elements that add to the atmosphere while not really taking anything away from it. Examples of that being the intro to paradigm, the double vocal chorus on Nova, the intro to meta, uh, to metamorph and adding elements of death core into the record, etc. Um, there are some really solid breakdowns. There's some great sweeping melodies and some of the best drumming in metalcore I've heard in a long time. Uh, there aren't really any skips on this, just some songs that are less good than the other ones. I think this, I think this record will actually age pretty well. And overall I enjoyed my time with it. I'll probably be coming back to it, but I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as I enjoyed becoming the archetypes last week. And I couldn't help but compare it for some reason. And I don't know what kept pushing my mind back. Like just go listen to becoming the archetype. They did it better sort of thing. And so for, (laughs) for, for for that reason, I gave it a six instead of the seven. I wanted to give it my standouts were both paradigm and hallucinogen. I really couldn't pick which one I liked better. What did you think about this record? That's interesting, man. I also gave it a six. Um, I'm not as into this specific style of over the top metal core as I used to be. It takes a lot of skill to make an album like this. And I hear a lot of similarities between this album and like the first Word Alive album. Yeah. Um, They're both full of creative musicianship and a lot of impressive vocal performances. But as far as my personal taste goes, I prefer this sound much more in smaller doses than over the course of a full album, I think. There's a lot I did enjoy on this album, though. Nova is a really strong track. Like you said, Paradigm is a great intro with a lot of just insanity to it it's it's just really good i think metamorph is easily the best track but there's some solid album cuts as well soul stood out to me new dawn is just insanity for as long as it lasts uh i'll probably revisit this one before we do our best rock albums of the year but i don't suspect it'll be heavy in my rotation that that's super fair man and because of the lack of marketing i think the i think the lack of hype kind of kind of made it the way that it is right now. I can't even buy any merch from this album right now. So I think the label really dropped the ball on this. So if you're Something this record, happened. Something must have happened. Like label albums like this don't just leak. Like band albums take so long to put together. I mean this like, was clearly a, a year process. in the making with how well produced it is. So something happened. Somebody dropped the ball somewhere and either somebody just was like They eh, sent Black Widow eh, to Disney it. Plus and they didn't <laughs> get their money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I got I got to tell you, shout out to Skojo for getting that money. So <laughs> Yeah, no, no, straight she, she up. Did, she, she did win that lawsuit. She read the contract. Good for, Good her. for her. For sure, man. Um, Obscene. So we're glad we were able to give you guys a good episode this week, or hopefully a good episode. Um, But next week is going to be a fucking banger. We got new albums from the Afghan Wigs, Ari Lennox, Armor for Sleep, Genevieve, Parkway Drive, and Totally Enormous Extinct Dinosaurs. It's going to be one for the record books. We hope you guys join us. Hope you had a good Labor Day. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.